So let's do this example. 100 liter of water per minute is to be cooled down from 90 to 65 degrees Celsius using a cold water flux uh, with an inlet temperature of 20 degrees with an heat exchanger with the area of 4 square meters and our task is to calculate the cold water flux needed if a counter current setup is chosen and the K value uh, has been estimated to 1 kilowatt per square meter in Kelvin. And we also get some numbers here. Uh, you could look this up in a handbook. So on the hot side we have uh, 971 kilogram per cubic meter and 4191 joule per kilogram in Kelvin as the heat capacity. And on the cold side, well, we actually don't know the temperature, uh, so you can't look that up. But let's assume uh, that it's 996 kilogram per, per cubic meter density and 4175 as the heat capacity. So what you would need to do if you do this really, really carefully is that you assume something assume a temperature range and then you look up the density and the heat capacity for that range and then you do your calculation and see does my result is, is that in uh, coherent with the assumption I did. Okay so uh, we make energy balances so the energy uh, that is being transferred and taken up respectively is the mass flux times the heat capacity times the temperature change in the respective flows. And that must be also be the same as the temperature that goes, the, sorry, the heat flux that goes through the surface. So K times A times the logarithmic mean temperature. And note, it's the logarithmic mean temperature because we have uh, no phase changes. So we have a nice steady increase uh, and decrease respectively of the temperature of the two mediums. So with the numbers we have, we can see that the hot medium is 100 liter per minute. Uh, so that's 0 0.1 cubic meter per minute times the density divided by 60 to translate it to kilograms per second. And uh, you have the change uh, in temperature for the hot flow is 90 minus 65, that's 25 degrees. And from that you can calculate the energy transferred. So that's approximately 170 kilowatts, so kilojoules per second. When you do these calculations, I recommend you to check the, caref the units carefully uh, because it's easy to do mistakes. Now, we know everything now uh, in the last uh, energy balance there, Q equals K times A times delta TL except the logarithmic mean temperature. So we can calculate the logarithmic mean temperature as the Q divided by the overall heat transfer coefficient and the area. And we get that to 42.39. And we know the formula for the logarithmic mean temperature, delta T2 minus delta T1 divided by natural logarithm of delta T2 minus natural logarithm of delta T1. And from that uh, we get, well first we have to realize that delta T2, that's 65 minus 20. Here it's, it's important to realize it's a counter current setup. So the coldest inflow, uh, the coldest cold medium inflow should meet the coldest uh, hot medium outflow. So 65 minus 20, that's 45 degrees on one side. And then you can cal calculate the temperature difference on the other side, and that becomes 39.9 degrees Celsius. We keep some extra digits here just in case, uh, so we don't run into uh, numerical problems. And delta T1, so the, the temperature difference between the two flows on the other side, that's 90 for the hot flow and the cold out we don't know, so we calculate that here. Delta T1 was 39.9, so we get 90 minus 39.9, and that's 50.1 degrees Celsius. So now we know the temperature, uh, so we can calculate the, the mass flux now, uh, because now we also know how much the temperature increased for the cold medium. So that's 50.1 minus the inflow temperature, that's 20, that's 30.1 degrees Celsius. And let's uh, check that uh, things look right here. Uh, if you take uh, the heat capacity of the cold medium times the temperature change in that medium, 
that's larger than the heat capacity of the hot medium times the temperature difference of the hot medium. And that should result in a mass flux uh, W2 that's less than W1. Uh, so let's put in the numbers there. So W2, that must be Q divided by heat capacity and the temperature change. And we get that as 1.35 kilograms per second, which is less than 1.62. So it seems to be in good order. And if we want to, we can recalculate that as liters per minute. So 1.35 kilograms per second times 60 seconds divided by the density and you get 0 0.081 cubic meter per minute or 81 liter per minute. Okay, uh, when you calculate heat exchangers, the thing is that you need to know how much heat needs to be transferred, what the four temperature should be, and what the flow rate uh, should be. And the flow rate uh, tells you the overall heat transfer coefficient, and then you can calculate the area needed. And once you have calculated the area needed, well, then you have to think, uh, if you want to do this all the way, okay, if I know how big the area should be, how big should then the heat exchanger be? And that might influence the transaction area, which in, in turn will influence the flow rate. Now the pro problem is you, you have to do an iteration here. You have to guess a flow rate or just set uh, a flow rate you would like to have and then you do, do the calculations and then you do this design whatever you do a uh, plate heat exchanger or whatever uh, and then when you've done all the design choices you can calculate the flow rate and if that flow rate is different than the one you used before then you need to redo your calculations and continue and continue until it all fits uh, if you have boiling, well, it all depends on how difficult equations are used. We will use the natural convection boiling. And then the first question we need to ask ourselves is how much heat is need to be transferred. Uh, and that uh, is one thing. And then is the second thing is, okay, so how many watts per square meter will that be? But note, we are going to try to calculate the heat exchanger area and we need to know how much energy is being transferred per square meter. Hmm. So guess something. You guess how many watts per square meter you need uh, to transfer and then uh, you calculate the heat transfer coefficients using these equations and then you calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient and then you calculate the area needed and then you calculate how many watts per square meter will that be? And if you're lucky, that is the same number as you guessed before. And if you're unlucky, you just have to repeat and repeat and repeat until you find a solution.